In this video, we're going to take those sample lines that we created and we're going to go and start creating our first section views. So in order to create section views, you're going to navigate to the home tab of the ribbon bar. You're going to go to section views and you're going to drop down and you're going to create multiple views. You could create a single view and then you also have the options of projecting objects into your section views. What we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to create all of the section views for every single sample line that we have created so far. So I'm going to go ahead and select create multiple views and then the create multiple multiple view windows pops up here. So inside of here, we select the alignment that we want to have our, our sample lines associated with and created as part of a section view. The only option we have is dev align because we've only created sample lines on dev align. So then we go to our sample line group. We only have one sample line group, so we select our dev exec one. If we had multiple, you could select which sample line group you wanted to create section views for. Moving on from there, the station range, it, we have it set as automatic because we want to create a section view for every single sample line that we have. And these are auto populated based on the information inside of Civil 3D and based on the start and end stations for our dev line. If we wanted to specify a user specified range, we could do that if we didn't want to include information from let's say before one plus zero zero, and we didn't want to include information after seven plus zero zero, we would just put those that information inside of these user specified ranges. Moving on from there, the section view names, what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to change my section view name to be devxec, and then have it counter. So it's going to change the counter number based on which section view we're in. Moving on from there, we have the layers that the section views are on, and then we have the view styles. So the view styles for our section views are just like our profile view styles. You have your information tab, you have your graph options, you have your grid options. So we're talking about clipping options, padding options, and axis offset options. We have our titles for all of the boundaries on the outside edges of our section view. Then we have our horizontal axes, our vertical axes, our display, and our summary. These are all exactly the same as our profile view windows, but just tailored towards our section views. And so you can go through and edit these just like you would have done for your profile view window. So moving on from here, one important thing to note is that the scale that you're set at is usually associated with the annotation scale inside of your drawing. This is going to become important when we move to the next section. So we'll note here that we're on 30 scale. I'm going to go ahead and click OK, and I'm going to go to next. The reason why the annotation scale and the scale of your sections is important is because we're going to potentially turn these into actual sheet sets that we're going to produce as a product for doing a submittal at a municipality or something like that. What we can go ahead and do is select a template that we're going to use to create those sheets. And you'll notice in here that this is selected as a NCD a section 40 scale. And so inside of here, what you'll notice is we have options based on information inside of your computer somewhere, usually saved wherever your civil 3D is saved to. Or if you have sheet sets that are already created, you can navigate to where those sheet sets are. But for now, we're going to go with the out of the box civil 3D sets. And inside of those, we have options for Arc D, Arc E, and ANSI D. And you'll notice here all the scales are 40, 20, and 50. There is no 30 scale. So when you select your scale for your sheet template, you need to make sure your annotation scale matches so that when you produce your sheets, they populate into your sheet set appropriately and aren't undersized or oversized. So I know that I want to go ahead and use a 20 scale. So I want to use an Arc D 20 scale. The only problem now is that in my general tab here, my road section is set to 30, but I don't want to modify this one. I actually want to modify my annotation button down here. So I'm going to go ahead and cancel out of all these. And if this option is not turned on, the annotation scale, for you to be able to select 1 and 20, what you do is you navigate to these three bars here, and then you navigate up to annotation scale in this list and check it off and then it will populate itself down in the bar down here. So once you have this down here, then you can select one in 20. You'll notice all of the text and that we have in this drawing has now scaled itself down to be one in 20 scale instead of the one in 30 that we had before. 
So now I'm going to navigate back into section views, create multiple views. And what you'll notice is, so I'm going to leave all this information as we had it before. But what I'm going to go ahead and do is edit my road section. And inside of my road section, you'll notice in the graph, my 30 has now auto updated itself to 20 so that I match the annotation scale inside of my drawing. So I'm going to go ahead and hit, hit OK. Then I'm going to go ahead and move on to the section placement window. I'm going to go into my template options. I'm going to click the ellipses and make sure I have my 20 scale selected. I'm going to click OK. After we've selected our section scale, what we're going to go ahead and do is go to our group plot style and we're going to modify our group plot style. Our group plot style effectively sets how far apart our sections are going to be from each other and where they're going to orient themselves from. So you can do it by rows and by columns. You can also state where you want your start corner to be, which is shown by this circle here. Then you can have your alignment section views about. So do you want to align them about the center line, the left or the right? I'm going to choose center line and then cell sizes uniform per row or column or uniform for all. I'm going to go ahead and leave it as uniform per row and column. That way we can select our space between adjacent section views. Uh, I'm going to set all of them as two. So I guess technically I could have selected uniform for all and then just had two as my uniform, but I'm going to go ahead and leave it as row and columns as both two and then add a drafting buffer space between the views. Then we move on to our plot area. How do we want our total plot area to be? Your horizontal major and minor grid areas your vertical major and minor grid areas, and then your gap between successive pages. So this is laying out the pages in model space. So then we go to display what options are shown and what, what options are not shown, and then we have our summary tab. So I'm gonna go ahead and click OK. Once we have, make sure you have your column and row set to two. So I'm gonna click OK, and I'm gonna move on to the next section. In here, we have our offset range. So what our swath widths are, negative 35 and positive 35. If you wanted to change it, you could you do a user specified range and give yourself some more room or shave off some of the extra space. Say you had 50 feet as your swath widths, but you knew you only needed to display 40 feet, you could do a user specified as 40. So I'm gonna leave it as 35 because we chose with purpose what our swath widths were. So I'm gonna go ahead and click next. From here, we're gonna detail our elevation range. It's just like profile views. Civil 3D automatically sets it based on the information in our sampled sections. If you wanted to specify a user's range, you could go ahead and select user specified and specify a height. I'm going to go ahead and leave it as automatic. Moving on to section display options. This is where you're going to turn on and turn off the sampling. Um, if you wanted to not show your dev core, you could uncheck it and that would not display inside your section view. I'm going to go ahead and leave both of them checked and I'm going to click next. And then moving on, we have the data band sets. These data band sets are just like the data band sets for our profile view windows. So you can edit them or create new ones. You can add information in, in the band section, you can choose section data or segment data. You have band styles that you can edit and change the text information in them. I'm going to go ahead and leave it exactly as it is in the drawing right now. So I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And then I am going to create my section views. So when I click create section views, now Civil 3D is asking me to specify my section view origin. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is move over uh, to above my profile view windows, and I'm going to pick and it will populate from the bottom left corner and upwards and outwards. And so what you'll see now is I have four sheets with nine on each sheet. So once we have these created, we can create our section sheets and we'll be doing that in the next video.